Fisheries are one of the most important assets to humankind. They produce about 15% uh, of the animal protein that we consume today. They generate 200 million jobs and revenues in the order of $85 billion to the world's economies per year. However, our use of this natural resource has been excessive. We know that many species are being overexploited. Basically, we are taking these populations to levels at which the animals that are left cannot possibly replace those animals that are taken by fishing. As a result, these populations continue to decline and so is the supply of food that the oceans provide. In addition, we also know that overfishing is changing the structure of these ecosystems and the way in which they have functioned for millions of years. When you lose uh, some species, some other species will flourish. And that's, for instance, the case of jellyfish and macroalgae, whose populations appear to be blooming as a result of fishing taking out their predators. So as you can see, there are different uh, social, economical, and ecological reasons to regulate or fishing of the oceans. And in fact, that has been at the core of several international initiatives, such as, for instance, the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries from FAO and the Convention on Biological Diversity. So we started by looking at common attributes that we could evaluate across countries. Then we asked nearly 1,200 uh, fishery experts to grade those attributes. We did uh, phone interviews and emails until every single country in the world was evaluated. What we found, though, is that the management of the world's fisheries is in a very sad state of affairs. At the global scale, only 7% of the countries have very robust science for the management of the fisheries. 1.4% also have uh, transparent and participatory processes to take that science into regulations. And less than 1% of the countries in the world also have capabilities to ensure that those regulations are complied for. When you look at the different countries in the world, you won't find a single country that is consistently good on all the attributes. In developed countries, we found that even though we have very rigorous um, science and also quite good enforcement, we, don't, we, we have quite a lot of fishing effort and subsidies that prevent us from managing our fisheries correctly. In developing countries, however, the, fish, the scientific uh, advice for fisheries is not so rigorous. We don't have a good enforcement of this scientific advice. However, we don't have so much fishing effort, but this doesn't prevent us from ranking low because uh, fisheries in developing countries are selling their rights to other uh, fishing companies or fishing countries to come and fish in their waters. We found that 33% of the poorest countries in the world are allowing one of the richest and most uh, successful countries in the world to come and fish in their waters. Those countries were in the European Union, China, uh, Japan, uh, Taiwan, South Korea, and the United States. For the second part of this study, we wanted to find out if doing any, any having any effort on management is actually going to ensure the, the sustainability of fisheries. And for that analysis, we just compare the, or different uh, attributes, the different grades that countries receive on their management with the, with the actual sustainability of the fisheries. And what we found was that out of all the attributes that we analyzed, only the attribute related to the transparency in the process of making the policies was the factor that had the strongest effect in determining whether the fishery of a country is going to be sustainable or not. When you look at this result, this result actually makes a lot of sense because imagine for a second the entire process. The process starts by having science, then that, that science is passed to the po to policy makers and then those policy makers make the regulations, right? So imagine a country in which you have very good science and that science passes through a policy process that is not transparent or has some problems, then the final result is a regulation that is no effective whatsoever. Now let's look at the, at the end, at the other side of the, of the process, in which you had a country that had very good enforcement, right? But if the regulation that these countries are enforcing were flawed during the process of policy making, what you are enforcing is a regulation that is not going to give you any positive results either. Policy transparency is the key to, to save the world fisheries, and there are several examples to back up this statement. In the case of sharks, many species are going to extinction because of finning. Regulating this industry is very hard for developing countries because of the high pressure of corruption in the generation and enforcement of regulations. 
in the Mediterranean Sea, we are seeing how bluefin tuna is completely overfished and just because good science that is being done there is not translated into good fisheries management. And this is basically because a high uh, pol uh, policy pressure. In summary, the management of the world's fisheries is very far behind international standards that we had recognized to achieve sustainable fisheries. A second important message of our, of our study, and that is a message of hope, is that when we adopt good science with transparent and participatory processes of policy making, there is a chance that we can achieve sustainability and leave some fish for future generations to feed on.